Arsenal 2, Bayern Munich 2, Manchester City 3, Real Madrid 3. 10 goals in a sensational Champions League night. And as a neutral, I really, really enjoyed watching that. I mean, the Real Madrid Man City game had some brilliant goals, but we're going to start by talking about the Arsenal game. I know I have a much bigger Arsenal following on here. And I have to say, overall, tonight in the Champions League, Odegaard, I thought, worked really hard, was really impressive. I thought Jesus and Trossard, those subs, worked really well and changed the game. I think maybe Tommy Asu, for me, should be having a go at left back, maybe for Arsenal. I thought Arsenal started the game really well, and then they conceded, maybe the mentality dropped. You've also got to remember that Bayern have the best attack in football in terms of output goals scored, lethal attack and transition, which caused them a few problems, caused them into some silly errors, so they kind of lost that control of the game. But then in the second half, Arsenal felt quite dominant, got that Trossard goal and, you know, arguably could have had a penalty and we will talk about that later. Manchester City in their game, they started slow, gave Real Madrid a lot of time on their transitions. It's similar in a sense to sort of buying Real Madrid a lethal in the transition and Real Madrid go up and then City respond well, although individual brilliance got City out of jail. I did think, although everyone will talk about Grealish, sorry, although everyone will talk about Foden and Guardiol, I did think Grealish was good. But I'm going to start by talking about the Arsenal game. I've seen a lot of People online saying Arsenal bottled it and all of that. How have Arsenal bottled it when they've got they're in the game? They've drawn they've drawn it from going behind and they get to go to the Alliance Arena. Now, I think watching that game that Arsenal can win their game and Manchester City can win their game. Man City will be at home, Arsenal will be away. It's going to be a bit more difficult for Arsenal away. But I did felt that Arsenal, for a sense, were in most phases more in control of that game than Bayern. Uh, it's just that Bayern defended a lot better than they normally do. And by have that lethal attack, Sane is going to cause you problems. I do think Arsenal are more than capable of going and winning that game. I do understand Arsenal fans' frustration because if that's the Premier League, it's a penalty. Like, let's be honest, you see the Harvey Harvey Elliott one. Did you see the one on Gusto? Did you, if I, Man United have conceded three penalties in the last two games and it's sort of been a very similar situation. So I understand why Arsenal fans are frustrated. I do understand the rest point of view. It does look like Saka's put his leg into the keeper. But when you watch it in real pace, has Saka got enough time to put his leg in the way? I do think had Saka not tripped over Neuer, he would have, he'd have, he would have had an open goal to put it in. I don't know if Saka's done that on purpose, but if he d- did do that on purpose, I think it was silly because I think he would have scored had because he was sort of past Neuer. But it happens so fast that, to be honest, I see the argument either way. It's a pen, it's not a pen. In the Premier League, that's a pen. I'll tell you that for a fact. In the Premier League, that is a penalty. Um and considering all the penalties that are given, the lack of consistency in the Premier League, that is a penalty. Whether Saka's looking for it or not, we can debate that. But considering the Premier League ref will get that as a penalty. So I understand Arsenal's frustration by support Man United. So I really honestly don't care. But let's talk about Arsenal. We'll talk about Jesus. I want to talk about Trossard. I want to talk about Odegaard. I want to talk about Arsenal in general. I think it's a big occasion. I think because of Bayern not having any away fans, I understand why Arsenal fans will be a little bit maybe disappointed and that they didn't get the win as well. but uh, And, you know, they went one to up, they started so well and it kind of dropped off. But you've got to remember, Bayern Munich, I know Bayern Leverkusen on the top of the Bundesliga, but Bayern Munich, they're made for European nights. Bayern Munich, do you know what I mean? This is Bayern Munich and this is Arsenal's first time really in the competition in the big games for a very, very long time. Now, for me, the subs changed the game. I thought Arteta got his subs spot on. I think the Sinchenko one was the questionable one. I think that was the one I questioned a little bit. But I understand why he brought Kibi off. He just wasn't having his game. I probably would have put, uh, not Timber, Tommy Asu on had I managed Arsenal. Uh, but I thought the Jesus and Trossard sub was really good. I like Martinelli. I think Martinelli is a very good player, but he wasn't on it today. I also think Jorginho and Rice can work in the big games, but I still think that Rice is best role as a six rather than him having to go out wide and in these ball carrying positions. But I want to talk about Jesus. How good is Jesus in tight spaces? Bayern defended really well. Bayern were not giving Arsenal space. Bayern probably know if you give that Arsenal space, if you give that Arsenal attack space, they score goals. And Bayern defended well, but I thought Jesus and Trost are two players that are really good in tight spaces, really good in central spaces, good technical ability. And that really changed the game because obviously lovely assists from Jesus, fantastic work. And I know he's not the best finisher, but Jesus's all-round game was, was brilliant. And I was saying at half-time, they're crying out for Jesus. You could see they were crying out for Jesus in that game. He's so good in tight spaces. 
uh, but Trossard, man. Trossard was one I wasn't sure about when Arsenal signed. I thought that Mudrick would be a better signing than Trossard, and I, I've, I got that wrong. However, I do think if Mudrick had gone to Arsenal, a bit like how Arteta's revived Havertz, Mudrick would be a different player at Arsenal. I do think Mudrick's actually a good player. But Trossard has 13 goals for Arsenal this season. Only Saka has more. Considering that Trossard's basically been a super sub a lot of games this season, if he's starting and playing minutes all the time, he could have 16, 17 goals for Arsenal. Plus, Saka takes penalties. He is clutch. I think in terms of finishing, Trossard is probably the best finisher Arsenal have. Now, the one thing I will say is I think today you saw Arsenal, why they would maybe need someone like Xhokares, because I felt that Arsenal sort of controlled the game better and the better team in all phases of the pitch. But by him are the more dangerous team, if you get what I'm saying, because they've got players of the quality of Kane and Sane, but particularly Kane, that finisher, that poacher. Whereas I think maybe if they had the Xhokares in there, I think there was a cross where they didn't get on the end of it, where they could have made it 3-2. I think it could be different. But considering Arsenal top of the league and this far in the Champions League without, you know, that ideal striker signing that they're probably going to bring in in the summer, without Timber that was going to play fullback, you know, next season they can advance even more on that. And I'm sure they're going to sign maybe a left centre mid next season to get the best out of their midfield dynamic. But Trossard this season, six goals as a substitute in all competitions. He's been absolutely unbelievable. Um, 13th goal of the season. But he's so good in those central half space areas and he's so good at finishing. He reminds me of Shotter of Liverpool where, you know, Arsenal got loads of good dribblers, loads of good uh, passers. But sometimes they create a lot of chances and they waste it. Diaz, Nunes, for example, for Liverpool. But Shotter for Liverpool always scores. And Trossard's a bit like that. Take Trossard off the bench, give him the ball in a good area, bosh. His finishing, his shooting, his ball strike is brilliant. He's really good at getting the ball, making those runs in the box or in the tight areas around the box, scoring and being a box threat. You know, Martinelli's good for being the transition threat, dribbling out wide, carrying the ball, but box threat, Trossard brings that and you need a box threat today. And I think Arteta got his sub spot on. I thought Jesus and Trossard were unbelievable. I think Saka had a very good game causing issues. I thought Ben White actually, I thought the Arsenal's defence was sloppy and Arsenal didn't quite look like themselves in defence today, but I thought they got a lot better in the second half. I think Saliba had a poor first half, but I think he had a good second half. Uh, but Ben White made that brilliant recovery tackle. I just think Arsenal were not used to realising how deadly maybe Bayern or maybe underestimate how deadly Bayern are in the transition. And I do think maybe Declan Rice would have been more suited to the sixth role to stop those transitions as well. But I think overall, Jesus was just massive for them. The pace that he brought, the everything he brought on. I think Saka had a good game. I think he gave Davies a tough night. But I think I think um, Davies is suspended for the next spell, so that will help them as well. And I think Saka, you know, had decent end product, gave Davies a tough night. And I think Odegaard was brilliant. I thought Odegaard's movement and off the ball work and his pressing and everything was brilliant. I think he was really pulling Brian players out of position, pulling Lehmann out of position in particular. But Odegaard's movement was was absolutely phenomenal. I think he works so hard off the ball. And I saw a couple of people saying, oh, Odegaard is average on Twitter. I think Odegaard had a really good game because... Sometimes you have to realise like the general work he puts in for the team, and I think it's really good. And I think, and this is an unpopular opinion, and I'm saying this as a Manchester United fan, but Odegaard's really, really grown on me. I think Odegaard's making that transition to world class status. He's not, I wouldn't say he's world class yet because you've got to do it consistently in the big games, but he's showing like today, big game, he steps up. I think Odegaard can be world class. I think you can argue Odegaard is world class if they win the league, if they win the Champions League. I think you can say as well. If they win it, you can say Odegaard's world class. And I think Arsenal can win it. I think they can go to the Allianz Arena and win it. It's. I think the problem for Arsenal is it's more of a mentality test that they haven't been in this competition for so long. Maybe they're underestimating how good Bayern are because Leverkusen are top. Like, you know what Harry Kane can do. But Odegaard was fantastic today. I mean, he controls the tempo. His defensive work rate's good. His offensive contribution is brilliant. He does everything. And I don't. I think because a lot of what he does is defensive or off the ball, and it's more like dragging players out of position and tactical. Maybe not everyone sees it, sees it, but he presses like a madman. And then when he's got the ball, he's so technically good and composed to keep the ball. His retention's good. He doesn't give it away sillily. And he can play those passes. And, you know, they, they got past Porto because of that. Odegaard magic and Odegaard can just play that one ball that can unlock a defence and sometimes you know that one goal is the difference between a league title that one goal is the difference between a Champions League title or not and Odegaard's the type of guy that can score that goal or make the, an amazing pass to set up that goal so that was sort of my review on Arsenal and I now want to move on to Manchester City if I was going to sum up the Arsenal game they started well conceded dropped off a bit 
Bayern are very dangerous. Then they got back into the game. They controlled the game. I think Arsenal did well. I don't think Arsenal fans should be too negative. I understand frustrations, not having a penalty, maybe wanting to win because you're at home. But I think Arsenal are more than capable of going to Bayern and winning that game. I actually think the goals they conceded came from defensive errors. Uh, they don't normally concede goals. That's rare with them. They normally shut down shop. And that's a learning curve for them to take to the away fixture. And I think they're more than capable of winning the away fixture. But I do want to talk about Manchester City because Phil Foden was a guy that I thought was overhyped when he was first coming through. Phil Foden was a guy that everyone was raving about. And I was just like, oh, he's a bit overhyped. You know, he's just playing for a good Man City side. I think, you know, I was a massive fan back in the day, not anymore, of Greenwood. So I used to be like, Greenwood's going to be clear of Foden. I have tweets where I've said that Greenwood's going to be clear of Foden and Saka. Uh, in a couple of years, it'll be common knowledge that Green was the best. Um, yeah, that, that really aged badly, didn't it? And I, I wasn't sure about Foden at first, um, but this season, I mean, I knew he had quality and all of that. I think it was just a bit of bitterness in me, to be honest, actually. But this season, he's been unbelievable. That goal was unbelievable. When he's coming up in big moments, he's like 23 goals and 13 assists this season. He's getting the numbers. He's coming up in big moments and he stepped up. And a lot of people were saying, well, Foden need to move to become the main man at City. But no, he doesn't. To become the main man at City is difficult because they have so much quality and he's becoming the main man at City. And I think that tells you everything about Foden's quality. But one guy that impressed me almost the most, I thought Guardiola these last few games for City has been good. I think Guardiola started slow, but he's really looking like the player of City signed lately and what a goal. But I thought Grealish was good. Yes, sometimes his end product lacks, but he looked like the Aston Villa Grealish, getting at players, running at players, trying to make things happen. I thought Grealish was unbelievable. I think because City have so many stars, a lot of other players will be getting headlines. But I think Grealish has had three or four really good games in a row for City where I think he almost is the glue for City. I think in those big games, he makes them look better. He has that quality in him. And I think if he was 50 million and not 100 million, his signing would be spoken about a lot better. Like he's had good games, he's had bad games. Of course, he's had inconsistencies. But in general, when I'm saying this as a United fan, I do think City are better when Grealish plays, if I'm going to sum that up. Um, I thought Akanji had good moments as well, but I think you know, both teams will probably take a draw. I think the draw was a fair result in both games, and that means that they're wide open for a brilliant second leg. But again, Real Madrid's attack's dangerous, Bayern Munich's attack's dangerous, and maybe it was naivety of the Premier League teams to give the opposition too much space. I don't know, but what entertainment as a neutral, hey? What entertainment? Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know if you like these double reviews or you'd rather me just do one Arsenal review, one City review. Thank you for watching. Bye.